Hey guys, I'm going to walk you through um, initially setting up the Cole Morgan um, demo with a positioning drive. So I'm going to walk you through what's in the box, how to connect it, and then um, how to demo some of the software. So let's first open the box and see what we got inside. One, you have the demo unit itself with the drive, some inputs and outputs. Uh, an encoder emulator. Uh, we've got 24 volt outputs and an analog input here. <clears throat> You're going to have three cables. You're going to have motor power and feedback cables. So two separate cables for that, which are here. And then you're going to have your main AC power for the drive unit. And you're going to have an AKM33 servo motor. So first thing you're going to want to do is wire up the motor. So here on the maroon connector, that's your, uh, that's your motor power. And you can see here, it's got a maroon internal side too. One quick note is um, this connector's got a flat top. That flat top will meet this flat top. And if you do that, the, the connector will easily screw together. Um, and that'll help you from damaging any of the pins. You don't need to get it down super tight, but twist it pretty decent. Same on the feedback cable. It's got a flat spot. These pins are actually a little thinner, so they're a little more delicate. Um, go ahead and flat top the flat top and then start screwing that together here. Okay. Okay, so now you've got the cables on the motor itself. All right, now we need to plug them into the drive. Here's our uh, motor feed or a motor power cable that's going to go up here into X2. And that simply just plugs in. It's got two small screws. You can give those a turn or two just to make sure it locks in place and it doesn't pull out. You don't need to tighten them down too hard. <coughs> and then your feedback cable will need to go in here your X10 port. This one's a little tricky to get in because it's a little tight. But if you come in from the side, you can see, and then give those a turn or two just to lock it in place as well. Okay. And then your AC power cable gets plugged into the side. And you are ready to power this thing up. All right, next up we'll, uh, we'll discuss connecting to the drive, opening up Workbench in the software, and, um, and then getting this thing to run. So <clears throat> let's do that now. Okay, um, so we've got the drive powered on. The next thing we're going to want to do is connect our uh, drive to our computer. So we're going to need to plug in. Ethernet cable, Ethernet cable gets plugged in up top at the uh, X11 port. We'll plug that into the back of our computer. From there, we'll open Cole Morgan Workbench on the computer. And we'll see if we can find the device. And you can see no device is showing up. So how are we going to figure out where to go? So one thing that we can do, if we push this B1 button up top here, it will display our IP address for us. IP is 169.254.0.0. Zero. Okay. So the next thing we'll need to do is log into our computer, go into uh, 
your network configuration, open up your local area connection, you'll click properties, you'll find the IPv4 here, we'll click properties there, and let's go ahead and set our network to 169.254.1.1. Let's check that one more time just to double check. Four dot two five zero dot one seven zero dot one seven two five zero and we'll leave that at twenty five. Save that, minimize it all out, Let's open Workbench back up, let's refresh, and now you can see my drive popped up in here. Let's go ahead and select that drive. From here, one thing that we can do to make sure that we're connected properly is we can blink the drive. So once I click blink, you'll see it goes to double eights on the drive side here. So we know that we've got connection to the drive. Um, and We'll go ahead and select connect. So Workbench is going out, connecting to the drive, and it's reading the parameters of the drive. It's also reading the parameters of the motor since we have a smart feedback device on there. Now, the faults that we talked about earlier, you can see that they're displaying here in my device display. So we'll be able to go ahead and clear those out. Um, let's go ahead and enable this drive. and we are now connected. So next step is going through and being able to kind of talk at a very high level about some of the um, different options here on the device uh, topology. Um, so we'll go through that next. All right, now that we've got our motor hooked up to our drive, we've got power to the drive, um, we want to start demoing our Cole Morgan Workbench software here for drive configuration. Um, the first thing you're going to start off with here is just in the uh, drive overview. Here you can see right now the name is test drive. We can set this to uh, say JMH P drive. It gives me our drive part number, lets me know the device type, um, and also you can see right now I'm active. You can go down here in some of the rest of the settings. Communication, that's just letting us know that right now we're using Ethernet IP. <clears throat> Power, this is uh, just showing us what bus, bus voltage we have. Currently have 166 uh, volts DC. Regen, um, we've got it selected to internal regen. Any power that gets pushed back through the system can get handled in the drive. Motor, the drive has gone out, looked at the motor. Uh, got information back from the smart feedback device. It gives us our part number and all the parameters for the motor. So there's no self uh, figuration there. It does it all on its own. <clears throat> feedback one, you can see we're using the smart feedback device. Uh, motor set is on. This is giving us our current degree uh, of the uh, shaft position. Feedback two, <clears throat> that's um, out looking at our X9 port that's on the drive and our X9 port is connected to a uh, uh, simulated encoder knob so we'll be able to use that you can see if I turn the knob that might count change down in feedback position <clears throat> there's no break on this unit um, we can show units here right now it's set up for motor only one of the nice things though is that you can come in here and select a different uh, mechanism and let's say it was a lead screw and we were attached to a linear actuator and let's say that that lead screw had a uh, uh, two centimeter, centimeter lead on it <clears throat> we could configure that so now whenever I call a position I can call the centimeter I don't have to call the rotation of the motor um, which is really nice and makes things easy to program well, let's go back to motor only 
And then down here, you can see that we can also do custom mechanics down in just the motor only. And right now we're saying two centimeters is one revolution of the motor. <clears throat> so it's pretty nice. Modulo, modulo is a pretty cool feature. If you were running a servo motor in one direction only, say you were doing a rotary index table, and it's always going to index in the same direction, it's never going to reverse directions, um, that means that the encoder pulse count is always going to be going in the positive direction. It's never going to be able to go in the negative direction and count down. So what will happen is, is that you will eventually use all of your encoder pulse counts and it will reset itself to zero once you surpass that limit. Um, that's not so good when you're trying to hold tight position. It, you could throw yourself off. What Modulo will let you do is go in there and reset that value back to zero whenever you want to call it. Um, so that's a really nice feature. <clears throat> Home. This is the homing routine that we want to select. You can see that there's quite a few options here in for us to choose from. Right now we're just going to select use current position because we don't have anything attached to it. And uh, if you just click start, it will go ahead and, and home the motor. Current loop, velocity loop, and position loop are the three loops that the servo motor is constantly monitoring. You can go in there and look at those, those if you like. <clears throat> uh, analog input. <clears throat> There's an analog input on the on the uh, on the drive, which we do have one going in there. Um, right now, we just have it set to monitor that. Um, we can also do an analog output, um, and then we have digital I/O on the drive as well. On the front of the box, we've got switches that simulate our inputs, which you can see here, and we will play around with some of these later. But I just want to go through that real quick. Performance Servo Tuner. This is a really nice feature that once the motor is connected to all of the mechanics that it's going to be driving, <coughs> this will allow the servo motor to go out and tune itself. So all you really have to do is come in here and push start and it will create a body plot and, um, and tune the servo motor to the mechanics of the system. There's also a feature here called slider tuning, um, which is a little bit more rudimentary. It's really just a slider bar that allows you to go in and adjust the stiffness of the shaft. Um, and it does take a second to, to move over to that. Sorry, it's running a little slow. There we go. Okay, and you can see our slider bar here. We can slide it left and right to adjust the stiffness. Now here in motion tasks is what allows us to actually start programming some position. So let's go ahead and do one. If you select here to the right, it selects the whole field. You can see our position is in centimeters. Our velocity is in RPM. So remember that, that that's pretty nice. Now we can double click here, open up this motion task. <clears throat> we can call a move in centimeters now. So if we had an actuator out there and we knew that we wanted to stroke the actuator 50 millimeters, we could select 50, change our RPM, let's say to 100, <clears throat> and we want to make sure that this is a trapezoidal type move. We are going to absolute position. We could change our position type uh, to, to relative position, but we want an absolute position on this move. We know we are going to 50 centimeters out. So we'll go ahead and select OK. Now you can see down here that this went pink. This also went pink. <clears throat> that lets you know that that uh, position parameter has not been saved to the drive. So click down here and save this to the drive. <clears throat> okay, and now you can see our motion tasks are now successfully saved to the drive. Well, let's say we want to trigger that motion off of a digital input. If we go back here to our digital I.O., and we want to start that motion task under parameters you can now see that the zero was selected why is zero there because the motion task that we set was in zero let's go ahead and set one down here in station 19 and let's call that one we just want to go back to zero essentially a home move okay and we can do that at 200 rpm <clears throat> 
again. That went pink. Let's save our motion tests. It's been saved. Let's go back into our digital I.O. And now let's say we wanted to start motion task 19. We come into parameters and now 19 is available to us. Okay. Another nice feature. Let's say that we know that we're going to have constant motion and we know what that motion profile is going to be. We're always going to stroke out to 50 centimeters and let's say we were always going to come back <clears throat> back home. So we're going to go negative 50 centimeters because we're doing an absolute position <clears throat> position move. So we're saying I need the servo motor to go in reverse 50 centimeters. So we want that at 200 RPM. Let's save that. Now what we can do here in position zero is we can do a following task. If we select next task and then now select our new position one, we can select position one. We'll start a condition and we'll delay the move by 500 milliseconds. Let's select OK. We're going to save that task. And now that that is saved, we can call that motion and have it move. So let's see what that looks like. First, let's I want it disable. Let's enable. Okay, let's start this move and let's trigger it off of our input. Okay, so it's going out to 50 centimeters, which essentially should be 10 rotations. And when it gets there, it's going to stop. It's going to hesitate for 500 milliseconds. And then it is going to go reverse in the opposite direction. Okay, there it's gone. It's going faster because we set the RPM to 200, twice the speed of the forward motion. And when it gets there, it's going to stop. Okay. Okay guys, so we wired up the servo motor to the drive. We connected the drive to our computer and changed our IP settings. We had workbench go out, find our drive and connect. We brought in the parameters of the motor and the drive and we ran through some of the different device to topology parameters that we can configure and set. We also used some of the digital I.O. on the, uh, the unit itself to trigger some motion and program some motion tasks. You guys are equipped to go out there and give a pretty high level demo and gain interest in Cole Morgan and what you're able to do for them and on your service and support and really start having a higher level conversation to start gaining some more opportunity.